Welcome to Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A blessing of expected parents will be available after Mass. The live stream will be Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. along Navarro Street. Come join us. Come join others from churches throughout our city to prayfully stand up for the Sanctuary of Life. The monthly Solemn Vespers will begin Sunday from 4 to 4.30 p.m. Here in the gym. There will be an 8 o'clock a.m. Mass on Wednesday, October 4th, and celebration of St. Francis, feast day, and a blessing of the pets at 3 p.m., located on the school playground behind the gym. Our parish festival will be at the community center next Sunday. Please note that the plates to go line will be different this year. Drivers will enter off the Ben Wilson by the skate park and drive around to the back of the community center. Following the signs that will be posted, as a kind reminder, we ask you to turn, up, turn your cell phones to silent. Professional hymn is number 227, O Breath on Me, O Breath of God, 227. in the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm joined today as can celebrate in this Mass with Father Justin Gillespie. He's joining some of his classmates here uh, in Victoria. They're all alumni, graduates of St. Joseph High School, so they're here for a reunion. Father Justin has been a priest for 10 years. He is an Opus Dei priest, head of Opus Dei in Ireland, so he's in Dublin right now. Imagine someone from Texas, a priest, going to Dublin. <laughs> Things change, don't they? We're always grateful in Texas for all the priests that came to us from Ireland. And now, as Father Justin was indicating, maybe we have to go to Ireland. Because that's how it works. We are a universal church. We go where we are needed, where we are called. Because God's presence is everywhere in the world that He has given to us. We rejoice this day as a people of faith. We gather and we hear about the importance from the gospel today, the importance of doing God's will. We can't just talk about doing what God wants us to do. We have to be willing to do what God wants us to do. But sometimes we fail, and so we ask God to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, and solace in love, and participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not from his own interests, but also for those of others. Have you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped, Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of the slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus. Every, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. and elders of the people what is your opinion a man had two sons he came to the first and said son go out and work in the vineyard today he said in reply I will not but afterwards changed his mind and went the man came to the other son and gave him the same order he said in reply yes sir did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. In these past few weeks, as we've seen so many examples of service and heroic acts of love in our own community as a result of Hurricane Harvey and what we've seen on television or heard from friends or family members in Florida and other areas that were devastated by Hurricane Irma. And now what we see on television and hear about in Puerto Rico as a result of Hurricane Maria, how 
people are doing so many good things to help one another. The elderly moved from harm's way to other nursing and safe facilities. People risking their own lives to help someone in need. People helping their neighbors and those they do not even know, focusing only on the fact that they are brothers and sisters together in Christ. Recently I saw, and maybe you saw the same on television, of how a hospital here in the United States sent a, a jet and a team of medical personnel to help a one pound premature baby with a heart condition to be flown out of Puerto Rico to, to a hospital in the United States for attention so that that child could survive. That entire team, they, they carry that little bitty child of God so closely and so carefully and how everyone was so excited when the plane took off from Puerto Rico to safety. Just a few examples of how much we respect life. And as we celebrate tomorrow, Respect Life Sunday, we ask ourselves this question, that if we do that for the living, why would we not also do that for the living that is yet to be born? To show that same kind of respect and that same kind of love. But we know as we celebrate Respect Life Sunday, that we still have a long way to go to ensure that everyone, every being, has a right to life, the born and the unborn, that all of God's children will receive the same gift that we have received, the same opportunity that we have received, the same chance to live. So much work has been done, and there is so much work yet to do. It's about changing first and foremost our attitude and our very heart. To embrace the truth that all life is precious from the moment of conception until natural death. That we can never play God. God is God. God is the giver of all life. God is the creator we are the created, and we cannot exchange roles. We cannot pretend that we can exchange roles. In respecting life, we respect God, the Creator. We recall that the core of our faith is found in that willingness to embrace life, that precious gift of our Father. Because when we respect life, we respect one another in a deeper way. When we can protect the unborn, then we're going to do a lot better at protecting the born as well. Yes, we have great heroic examples of faith. So many people that have done so much in these past few weeks with so much devastation have gone out of their way to help others. And we have to make sure that we keep helping the unborn as well. And so we know that the core of our faith, as we hear in our scripture readings today, that the core of our faith begins with doing the will of the Father. These scripture readings remind us of this truth. And so Jesus shares a parable with us about a man who has two sons. The Father requested that both sons go into his vineyard. One refused, but later went. The other son agreed to do so, but never did go into the vineyard. And so Jesus proposes a question to the chief priests and the elders. And Jesus proposes this question to us at this very moment. Which of the two did the Father's will? We would answer like the chief priests and the elders of the people would answer. Obviously the first one, because he went. He was reluctant. He first said no, but he did go. In turn, Jesus challenged them and Jesus challenges us. 
by stating, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him. But tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. Our faith isn't about words, it's about action. Jesus didn't talk about God, Jesus showed us God. He is God, and He showed us how we can be one with Him in heaven by being one with Him here on earth. Jesus shows us that when we do the will of the Father, that we will receive the gift of eternal life. That when we seek to do as Jesus has done, by showing us how to do that will, by agreeing that it's not just what I want, but what God wants for us. That when we can trust God in that kind of way, we deepen our faith. We find ourselves more filled with joy and peace. When we say, Lord, I surrender to your will, and if you want me to go into the vineyard, I will go into the vineyard. We may not be happy about it. We may question if we have the gifts to do it or if we have the energy to do it, but we can do it. Because Jesus says, when we do the will of the Father, He will give us, through His Holy Spirit, He will give us the grace to accomplish it. The Bible is filled with those that have excuses for not doing the will of the God, but when they trusted and went ahead and did it, great things happened. Ours is to do the will of the Father. That's about respecting life that God wants us to truly embrace to enjoy all that He gives to us. And so indeed, the core of our faith is doing the will of the Father and to understand that we do so not by words, but by actions. St. Paul knew that. St. Paul lived that. St. Paul sought to help others to see that faith is about working in the vineyard of the Father and not merely saying that we will and then choose not to do so. So in his letter to the Philippians, Paul reminds us that at the, knee of, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We pray for the grace to do that every day, to do the will of the Father. Tomorrow we have an opportunity to publicly make a statement that we know it's not just by words, as I said, but by action, that we stand up for life. Tomorrow's the life chain. At two o'clock, there will be Catholics and other Christians standing on the Viral Street in three or four different places, and the, the details are in the bulletin, just for an, action, for an hour. And the action that we exemplify is not by words, because we don't say anything. We're not protesting. We are standing in silent prayer, some choose to hold a sign that says choose life or other wording that respects the understanding of life itself. And we just stand in that hour of silent prayer. And I'm always fascinated by how many cars that pass by on the Vero Street and they honk their horns in support. But some make very crude comments. Some make horrible gestures to us who stand there. But that can't dissuade us. That can't stifle the spirit of Jesus Christ. They can make their gestures and they can say their negative words. But we stand in silent prayer. And in that life chain, with our brothers and sisters throughout the United States and Canada, we make a statement. We make a statement that we seek to work in the vineyard of the Father. That we seek in our own unworthiness, in our own sinfulness, in our own need for, for the mercy of God, we stand for life. We stand as a people knowing sometimes we don't always respect life and the choices we make, but we stand up for the truth that all have a right to life. So that all of us can have a chance to do the will of the Father, to work in the vineyard of our loving God. And so let us continue to make those kinds of statements every day to truly see that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bend. It shouldn't have to take a hurricane or 
disaster of some type or a tragedy in our lives to remind us of our call to respect life, to treat each other with the respect that we should as brothers and sisters in Christ. But sometimes it does. And so we take this opportunity to say, Father, we seek to embrace the cross of your Son, Jesus. We seek to do the will of the Father. We seek to follow your example in making sure that all have a right to life and that when born, all will be respected in life until we are with you forever in heaven, that great vineyard that we await. Let us pray that we will be examples in that kind of way. Let us pray that indeed we will respect life because we will live our life in Christ. faith, let us profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, Consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Virgin Mary. Amen. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We seek to do the will of the Father, and we ask that the Lord answer our prayers. For our church, may we come to know what it means to empty ourselves and give witness to Christ, love through our actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, may they learn from the humble ex example of Christ to put the needs of their people ahead of their personal desires and ambitions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people who turn away or run away, May we always welcome them back with loving arms, supporting them in their questioning and in their struggles. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are discerning their life's path, may they find sure direction through prayer and attention to God's call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a growing respect for all life, may it be protected from conception to natural death in our country and around the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed and for the repose of the soul of Stanley Garcia, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in our silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we are grateful indeed 
for the call that you offered to us. The life, that gift that is so precious that you share with us. Help us to be faithful to you above all else. Help us to do your will each day. And we ask, Father, that you answer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn for the presentations of the gifts is number 305, the summons 305.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Mm -hmm. wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son 
and filled with His Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May He make of us an eternal offering to You, so that we may obtain an inheritance with Your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Brendan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who have you been summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, man with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty oh Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
202, I am the bread of life, 202.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Again, it was so good to have Father Justin with us. And it's always nice to have a, a native vocation come back home. And just an update on what's going on here at the cathedral, which is a lot, um, the building-wise. The cathedral, uh, we received notice today that it's about 70% finished in terms of the cleaning of the wood. They have scaffolding that goes to the ceiling, so it's about 70% of the mold that's been removed. We have someone coming in that we're flying in for the artwork to work on that. The statues have kind of um, taken a hit because of all of the moisture and then all of a sudden we put all this heat into it and so the statues, that beautiful wood has become very, very um, fragile and very bitter and, and, and so we have to be able to preserve those statues so we're going to be oiling those and they've been removed, most of them from the church itself into air conditioning and we're working on the roof plan so we have, a, I think it's going to be a very beautiful roof and Hopefully, they're going to get in there as soon as they can to start pulling off the old and putting the new. They put more tarps on it because it was still raining in the, in the cathedral. So they have added tarps. So the next rain comes, I'm going to be ready. <laughs> so, so we'll see when the test comes. But hopefully, we'll get that new roof going as soon as we can. Um, here at the, our new cathedral center, everyone is still so heartbroken. But the men, and they're working so hard and they're drying it out and they've done a lot this week and hopefully soon that they'll be start the process of restoring and so we've got a lot going on thank you for your patience thank you for being the church that you are regardless of where we are having mass and, and having meetings we're united together our school successfully completed the accreditation process this past week and so sister laura and the teachers everyone worked so hard and the team that came in to evaluate us were very understanding of our situation they said wow considering everything that's going on here at victory you are doing exceptionally well so uh, that was a relief to have that done but also received that affirmation that you know we're doing our best and the children have been just rebounding so quickly as children do so thank you again for your patience the lord be with you may almighty god bless you the father son and holy spirit Amen. go forth the mass is ended Our recessional hymn is number 209, Immaculate Mary 209.